episode three of Bespoke Chats. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the drum sequencer module, uh, how to control it uh, within Bespoke with the mouse and keyboard, and also how to control it with uh, physical controllers. So you see I have the software on the screen here, and then picture in picture, I've got my mono uh, as a grid for controlling the sequencer. I find step sequencers to be a really interesting sort of problem. You know, you want to control a lot of steps at once for a long sequence, but you also want to fit a lot of detail into each step. In the case of a drum sequencer, you want to control um, which sample is playing and what velocity is going to play at, and maybe some other things, but I don't handle those. Um, uh, but you want to do it without doing too much context switching. Like, I see a lot of sequencers uh, focus on you know one instrument at a time and then a lot of controls for each. Uh, but I'd rather think about the big picture more of the time. Uh, so this is sort of the system that I've come up with here. Um, so in this layout here, I've got main parts. I've got a, a drum sense sequencer going into a drum player object, which is a, a set of uh, 16 samples, uh, going into an effect chain, going to the output. So the drum sequencer is a pretty straightforward looking uh, grid. So you enable it and it'll start going. And you can see that the line is moving across the screen with the, what note is currently playing. So you can set like a kick, snare, kick, snare, and there you go. So let's turn those off. Um, and you'll see that one thing I've added, instead of just being uh, clicking on each step to turn it on and off, um, I wanted to be able to have velocities for each step. So each of these uh, grid cells is actually a slider, which represents the velocity of the step. So let's go with a hi-hat. You can see, let's see how I'll drag across at different velocities, like multi-sliders, to create a, a hi-hat line here. So this idea of dragging across a row at different heights, I actually stole from uh, a guy that I did a performance with once. Uh, he's William Fields. I'll put his Twitter handle on the screen somewhere. Um, but he is also a guy who builds his own interfaces for making music. Uh, he does it all in Reaper. Uh, and he has an iPad interface where he's using either Touch OSC or Lemur, I'm not sure which. Uh, and he drags, uh, well, that's funny, William Fields just tweeted at me. Uh, he uh, drags his finger across the iPad screen, and that is what sets the velocity of each of the steps. Um, so I stole that for my mouse and keyboard interface here, where when you start dragging on one, you're sort of confined to that uh, row, but you can set different heights and it lets you get like a nice variation so you can have like your kick snare cool and that's going through and playing your samples at different velocities getting something a little more interesting than just if i had done this all at full velocity Uh, but you're able to do it a little quicker than you would be able to with a lot of other interfaces. Uh, one thing I have up here is there are several presets. Uh, they're all hard-coded right now, but you can sort of choose your 16s, your 8s, uh, a kick and snare, uh, sort of little almond break. Sounds better with different uh, drum sets. A boogaloo beat. Dubstep, a little trade back and forth, and then just to clear everything. Um, where was I? Okay, next up. Oh, you've heard we have a little bit of swing here. Um, so the swing is actually a feature of the transport, but you can hear that we have a swing on the 16ths here, where if we went straight, it's just straight 16ths, and then swung. And you'll see that the uh, the way that the cursor is advancing is following the swing here. With a heavy swing, you can see it. If we change like a quarter note swing, 
it's even clearer. Let's go back to eight with a slight swing. And let's clear it out. Uh, so a swing is one way to get things sort of off the grid, but uh, a way to get things really off the grid is to use this offset slider here. So let's put in uh, kick snare again. with some hats. If we bring the offsets up, then we have sliders next to each row, and by dragging them around, we can make the hats happen earlier or later. So the uh, offsets that I've always heard are sort of standard gitter. You want your, your snares to be early and your hats to be a little late, and that gives you sort of the, the J. Dilla uh, swing or I'm not sure exactly what term people use but you can get a good feel uh, one thing that happens to me is I'm working with these samples a lot and I start to get sick of my drum sets um, and you know like I can adjust the speed of them but they're all this they're all still the same like every pitch relative to each other um, you can also go in and change use of the velocity of the speeds of the drum samples individually. But to do this a little quicker, I just added a little shuffle button here. So if I hit shuffle, it slightly adjusts the volume and speed of each so I can get new drum sets uh, pretty quick. I can also switch over to other drum kits for a better sound too. Um, All right, uh, so this is me using the um, mouse and keyboard interface, but you can see I have the monome here as well. Uh, the monome is represented on the screen uh, with this grid here, which mirrors the physical grid. Uh, if I let's get a sequence going again, well, let's just keep the sequence off to show you. So. The way that I have the monom laid out is I want to always uh, try and fit the entire length of the sequence onto the monom, and I sacrifice vertical rows to do that. So I get as many rows as I can uh, to fit the length of the sequence. So for our 16 step sequence that we have here, uh, to fit that onto an 8x8 eight eight grid, that means I am really viewing a four, clear this, and I'll reset my offsets to make it easier to look at. I really have a four by 16 uh, space that I'm looking at. So you can see it goes one, two, three, four. So if I want to do a kick snare pattern, then I do kick, snare, kick, snare. Uh, and this will auto-adjust based on the size of your grid and how many steps you have in your sequence. So if I had, you know, for example, a 16 by 16 grid, which I wish I had, uh, then it wouldn't have this uh, line break in it at all. It would just be one big surface like you see here going all the way across. Uh, also, if I do, I can make this a two-measure sequence so there are 32 now I have a 2 by 2 2 by 32 view of the on-screen grid and I would do kick snare kick snare kick snare kick kick snare cool and this will also actually auto adjust let's go back to one measure it'll adjust your time signature as well. So let's go to a 3-4 time signature. You see it'll go 1, 2, 3. All right, let's go back to 4-4. Four, four. Uh, so one issue that I've always had with using a monome or other grid to input uh, steps is that there's no way to put a velocity in. So something I came up with recently that I like 
is I have this touch strip to the side here. Uh, so you can see I can move it up and down and it knows when I'm touching it and when I'm not. Um, so I have it so that if I'm not touching it, it'll input a note at full velocity. Uh, and if I hit an existing note, it'll turn it off. But if I'm touching the touch strip, then when I put in a step, it'll go at the velocity I'm touching it. And actually, if I'm holding it and I drag up and down, you can see that I am setting the velocity there. So if I wanted to, let's clear, so I'll let go and let's clear this out. If I wanted to put in a uh, hi-hat line with varying velocities, I'll just drag my finger up and down and hit all the steps. And you can see that I have a nice little varied hi-hat line there. Figure that out. All right, what's next? Um, I can also change my step interval, so I don't have to be at 16 uh, notes here. I could be doing eighth notes, and now you'll see I'm no longer, I no longer have a line break. I just have eight steps, and I can control eight rows. Um, so get higher up into my sequence here, get my, my crash, my uh, open hat, all that. Um, I can also get very high res, so if I go 64th notes, you know, I'll have a, a 1 by 64 grid, and I can get really detailed with my kick patterns. So, let's go down to 16th notes again. Uh, but so right now I, I'm only able to, with the mono effect, the bottom four rows of the sequence. Uh, so I have this offset up here, uh, which allows me to move up and down in the sequence. So let's do like kick snare, kick snare, and then we can move up. So let's move up to the toms. I'm paging up and down in this, so I go back down to the Kitchener. So that allows me to move around on the grid. A lot, a lot like uh, in Ableton when you have your, your clip grid and you're moving around on a launch pad, you have, I forget what they call it, but sort of this window that shows you where you are in the software. All right, uh, another cool thing that I have um, is you can use the velocity of the steps to also control the likelihood that the note will play. So there's a bit of a stochasticity to the step sequencer, a randomness. So let's go back down to the bottom and let's put in, uh, let's put in kick the snare at full velocity and then let's put in And let's also put in like a, a half velocity kick in there. So if I click this stochastic checkbox, the STCH, now the odds of a step playing are its velocity. So if I have something at 50% velocity, like this kick here, then it'll only play on half of the times uh, that uh, time gets to it. So it played at that time. All right, it keeps playing it. Let's see, let's make it lower up. Oh, that time it skipped it. There we go, we got a skip. All right. Other features. Let's see, you can also, uh, if you pass a another MIDI controller, like uh, I have a machine over here, uh, that's being passed through the drum sequencer. I can set a note repeat on here. So if I set like eighth note repeats and then I hold the uh, controller, it'll play. 
based on the velocity that I hold. Let's go faster to 16. If I press harder, it'll play a higher velocity. But it's just a way to do uh, sort of a, a note repeat. Which is a fun way to play and stay in time. And this also actually respects the offsets. So if I have my hats happening very late, uh, they will with the note repeat as well. All right, let's get the offset back out. Um, and just for a little extra here, you know, let me get some sequences going. I found when you're using sequences, uh, if you're not doing something stochastic or something, you know, they can get kind of stale hearing the same one measure over and over again. So a good way to spice it up is to use some stutters. Or some delay, like a nice dotted eighth delay, to add a little layer to it, and you can also always use a distortion to spice up the sound as well. Cool. Uh, and then one last thing, it's a, a feature that I've got in that. Uh, you know, it's sort of under-designed, but, uh, you know, it's there, so I'll tell you about it. Uh, I have a way of switching between different sequences. So I have that sequence here, and on this sequence, on this one, let's do... Let's do that, and if we go back to zero, then we go to our previous sequence, so we can switch between. Cool. Uh, so I think that's it for this episode. So hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of the different stuff that the drum sequencer can do. Um, and I hope that there's some stuff there that's unique to Bespoke. Um, so let me know anything else that you uh, think that I should do with the drum sequencer. And uh, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.